if you search, find them. Let me take you to one of the largest lodges in the world, which has become a museum. This one is in Guthrie, in uh, Oklahoma. We'll go inside, you will see swastikas. They will say they are the other way around. Yes, that might be so, but uh, that doesn't mean anything, because the one way around it represents the female aspect, and the other way around it represents the male aspect, so it doesn't make any difference. Uh, you will find the symbol of the sun god Ra, you'll find the all-seeing eyes, and then you'll see the statue, it can be male, it can be female, it makes no difference, you should figure that out by now, with the finger on the mouth. And they will tell you that means secrecy, don't reveal the secrecies, or quiet in the lodge, all kinds of nonsense they will tell you, it's got nothing to do with it. This is only for the initiate to know what this is. What this, is. this is the symbol of Horus, and I'll show it to you in a moment. On the floor, you have uh, the various pentagrams in this uh, form over here, and the pentagons, and in front of this statue it says, all who stand here stand facing the east. Let each review his obligation and renew them in his heart. So this worship is towards the east, which the Bible forbade. Now there's the god Horus. You will notice that he's always depicted with his finger on his mouth. His religion is for the initiate. These are the, uh, the, the dress of the various Masonic levels. The Sovereign Grand Commander has this symbol on the front. And there you have it on Sovereign Grand Commander Henry Clausen. That it is. That's the symbol of Baphomet. That's Baphomet, the androgenic god. And uh, you will be surprised where Baphomet features these days. I will be showing it to you in future lectures. And of course, it's also on the building over here, which is the headquarters of the Mother Supreme Council of the World, Washington, D.C., where the Constitution for the New World Order has already been written, right there. That's Baphomet, and this is how the symbolism was also used by Alice A. Crowley. In the lodge, you will find IHS. I showed you that was the symbolism for the Jesuit order, Isis Horus Set. Uh, this stained glass window, in the, in the light, it is... Uh, in the day, it is white. In the night, it becomes black, a very special technique. And if you know that Osiris was worshipped as black or white, then that explains the story. They have an Egyptian room uh, with all the symbolism that goes along with it. They have an Assyrian room because they represent all the ancient religions. Here is a statue of Albert Pike. It's called the Albert Pike Lodge, number 162. To study and seek to interpret correctly the symbols of the universe is the work of the sage and the philosopher. It is to decipher the writing of God, Albert Pike. Now here is his book, Morals and Dogma. I've scanned this in so that people don't say I'm talking hearsay. They must know I have the book. And uh, whatever is quoted over here comes directly from him. In the Scottish Rite, the crown and scepter symbolize a man's dominion over himself. We are God. We don't need anyone else to tell us what to do. The history of man's thought is the only history worth much study. Don't worry about the other one. There's the library. I just photographed it to show you that the history of Freemasonry and the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry are genuine uh, books. The New Age has, uh, magazine has been replaced by Scottish Rite magazine. There's also the symbol over there that we spoke about earlier. And it is to himself alone that man can find enduring happiness. We are our own savior. Again, in this lodge, you will have Jacques de Molay um, honored. Rosicrucianism, the cross on the rose. The one who really suffered was Osiris, not Jesus Christ. And uh, there you have the mystic Tao, and other symbolism, like the lion with eagle wings, symbol of Babylon. And here you have the double-headed eagle in its original black-white form, representing the two deities. This is the cornucopia. What does it stand for? It is the symbol of many political organizations. It was the symbol of the organization that expanded and used apartheid. It was the symbol of the National Party in Southern Africa. It's interesting. So, what were they? Let's ask what the carnacopia means. 
The cornucopia or horn of plenty was double sexed in symbolism. The horn was masculine and the inside was feminine. The fruit inside symbolized productiveness of the female. It's a sex symbol, again, the union of Isis and Osiris. So when we look at these deities, remember that's Horus, Isis, she's the one who stands on the serpent. Mary is the one who stands in Catholicism on the serpent. The Dionysius as a child is just the same thing. These gods came in the hexagram, in the hexagon, uh, etc. They came in the square. This is the god Harpocrates, or if you like, uh, Horus. There he has the cornucopia in his hand, and the finger is broken off. That points to the mouth, as per usual. Here's another Masonic lodge. Inside, you'll have the same symbolism. You'll have yin-yang signs up against the ceilings. This is the blue room. And uh, there are only three lights in a lodge because the north is the place of darkness. Now, if you know your Bibles, you will know that the north is where the throne of God is. That's the source of darkness. Something's upside down. And the various rooms used by the Scottish Rite and the York Rite, etc., two pillars always representing uh, Yachim and Boaz. On top of it, you'll see the signs of the zodiac, there they are. This uh, shows you what this is. Astrology is a science demanding respect of the scholar, notwithstanding its designation as a black art, and in a reflective sense, in an occult science, this science was known to the ancients as the divine art, the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. So astrology is uplifted by Freemasonry, although the Bible condemns it. Right. From that science, many of the most significant emblems are borrowed. The lodge itself is a representation of the world. It is adorned with the images of sun, moon, and stars. And we can go through the astrological symbols and see that they represent phallic worship as well, made prominent part of the mysteries. These are all Masonic sources. Here is another, the, the Red Room, Freemason initiation ceremonies we saw are identical to how Loyola presented himself to the Pope. So they come directly from the Jesuit rituals. Some of the uh, pomp and grandeur of the lodge you will find represented in the parliaments of the world. Uh, the symbolisms, this one is very prominent. And uh, you will see many organizations use it. Sports people use it. Why? Because the sports companies and the sports superstructures are all Masonically controlled. And uh, some of the hand signals, we're not going to go into that. We're going to stick to quotes. Now let's ask them directly. We've seen it in symbolism. We've seen it suggested. You can figure it out if you're really interested, but...